Well, that was unfortunate. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, I've got another five tools that I found while Googling hardcore. One of these tools might even help out Mrs. Doubtfire. So let's start to take a look at these tools. So I'm super stoked about today's video. This video, like many of my five tool videos, are five tools that don't get a whole lot of attention. And frankly, a lot of these tools are budget friendly options for those just starting out in woodworking. So our first tool that we're gonna take a look at today is a tool that literally made me laugh the first time I saw it. See, believe it or not, when I was in college, I actually put out a rap album. And you can tell by me having a woodworking YouTube channel versus a rap YouTube channel, that album wasn't very successful. And back in the 90s, it was all about getting a metal grill. And our boy Birdman, who helps us out with our feather boards, has been telling me to get one for years. So I took his advice and I bought my first woodworking metal grill. Yeah, boy! Let's go take a look at it. So if you're a dentist, you're going to absolutely love this tool, as it's a drill bit organizer that looks like teeth. And this thing isn't a gimmick. This is a functional storage solution for your bits. Let's go take a closer look. So out of the box, you can see it comes with these bit holding gums along with a ratcheting screwdriver. Now most adults have 32 teeth, but this thing has 28 bits. So what bits are included with this set? Well, let's go take a closer look. So now that we have the bit holder looking like grandma and grandpa, you can see it comes with nine Phillips head bits and these come in all different shapes and sizes. It also has eight flat head bits as well as seven star bits and then four Allen bits. Now inside of the gums, you can see there's a metal structure and that structure is magnetic. So you can place your bits into the gums and they're not gonna slide out. Now you may not have heard that as I was placing the bits into the gum, but there's an audible snap, letting you know that that bit is in contact with the magnet. So let's shake this up and see if any of the bits fall out. So I'll give this thing a violent shake and see if any of those bits fall out. And you can see from there, all those bits are right in place. Lastly, let's take a look at the driver. Now I will have to say I'm not too impressed with the handle of this thing as it is made of plastic. This little driver is a ratcheting driver, however. It allows you to turn clockwise, counterclockwise, as well as have it in a stationary position. Now I do like the fact that this driver is only three inches long. This will be perfect for doing installs of things like hinges. However, I suspect I'll revert back to my old drivers when doing other work. So if you like to have fun in your shop, check out this chattering teeth bit holder. I suspect that this thing's gonna get a lot more use in your shop than you think. Well, that's gonna do us for our first item today. Let's get a little bit more serious and take a look at our second item. So on April 28th of this year, it's one of my favorite holidays. Well, maybe not my favorite holiday, but it is an important one. It's World Safety Day at work. And because of this, I found a shop accessory that I hadn't seen before. See, when I'm not being a dumbass and wearing flip-flops in my shop, I like to wear things like boots. These provide me all the protection that I need. But most of the time, I'm wearing sneakers and I forget to throw on those boots. But what if there was a sneaker that provided the protection of a boot? Well, that's what I found, a steel-toed sneaker that's almost indistinguishable from popular brands like Nike and Adidas. Let's go take a look. So this is a sneaker made by the brand Larnmern, and I found these on Amazon.com, so I thought I'd give them a try. As you can see, they're very similar to a lot of popular shoes. Now, pretty's one thing, but let's see how comfortable these sneakers are and how well they protect your feet. So I'm going to replace one of my shoes with the Larnmern and see how well it compares to my current sneakers. Fashion show, fashion show. So I've had these shoes on for about 10 minutes and I can honestly say that they're just as comfortable, if not more comfortable than my Adidas. Now, one of the reasons why these shoes might be so comfortable is they do have a very soft, almost gel-like bottom. But not only that, Lemurne claims that the sole of this shoe is actually bulletproof. Now I don't do a whole lot of shooting in my shop, but it would be nice if I step on a nail. Now, although I'm not gonna take a bullet to these shoes, I am gonna do something that I might regret. I'm gonna drop a sledgehammer on my toes. Idiot! So here I've got an eight pound sledgehammer. I'm gonna drop this on my toe and see if I can feel it. And although I winced a little bit when dropping it on my toe, I didn't feel a thing. So if you're a weirdo and you wanna look stylish in your shop or you wanna be like me and just have a shoe that you can wear inside and outside of your shop, knowing that you'll have the protection in your shop, check out these shoes by Lemurne. Well, that's two items down and only three left to take a look at. 
Our next tool is made by a manufacturer that makes a lot of appearances on this channel. And that's because for woodworkers, I think that this brand provides a lot of value for the money. And no, I am not sponsored by them. And you may have guessed it, but this tool is made by Milescraft. This is the Milescraft Center Finder. Let's go take a closer look at it. So this tool comes with the center finder itself, along with the number two pencils. And if we look at the design of this tool, you can see how the center finding works. It's got two posts that cradle your wood. So let's go scribe some lines. So for this tool, you're obviously gonna center your pencil right in the middle of the tool and slide it into place. Once your pencil's in place, you can simply cradle your workpiece and rotate it until both of the legs are in contact with the edge of the board. Then you can slide your tool down the length of the board, creating that perfect center line. Now, obviously, as the name implies, this thing can find the center of a piece of wood, as thick as two and a half inches wide, but that's not why I purchased this tool. I purchased this tool because of a unique design that this tool actually has on its side. This is a great offset tool. Let's go take a closer look. So if we look at the end profile of this tool, you can see that there's two lips on either side of the tool. This is used to make offsets. If we look at the side of the tool, you can see there's little notches going in 16th of an inch increments. Let me show you how this is used. Now, hopefully you can see this on one side, it's got notches for each eighth of an inch. It's got an eighth inch, quarter inch, three eighths, one half, as well as three eighths. If we flip the tool around, it's also got 16th of an inch. It's got one sixteenths, three sixteenths, five sixteenths, seven sixteenths, as well as nine sixteenths. So depending on which side of this tool you're using, you can accommodate offsets from 1 16th of an inch all the way up to 5 eighths of an inch. And this is simply done by resting one side of the tool against the side of your workpiece and scribing your line down the length of the board. So if you do a lot of casing work or trim work, this might be the perfect tool for you so that you can scribe out those lines for those small reveals. You can also see that this tool can accommodate a mechanical pencil as well. Another couple features of this tool is there's a small hole on the very edge where you can store your pencil. There's also a rare earth magnet where you can attach it to something metal. Now, if I had any gripes about this tool, it would be that it's made out of plastic. I really wish they would have made this out of metal, but I'm sure that's related to a cost decision as this thing is less than $6. Well, that's gonna wrap up our third item. Before we move on to our fourth, I ask you to do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. I typically do about two long form videos and one short a week. So hit that notification bell if you wanna be informed of any video postings. Also, for any of the tools that you may see in my shop or any of the tools that we're featuring in this video, I'm gonna leave links in the description below so you can go check out those tools for yourself. Now let's move on to our fourth item. So let's talk about sanding for a bit. If you've been watching this channel for any period of time, you know that I've featured a lot of hand sanders on this channel. Let's take a look at some of those. So these are a number of sanders that I've featured on this channel. There's things like detail sanders or sanders that take sheet sandpaper. There's also orbital sandpaper sanders, like this mouse sander, the sand plane, or this edge sander. Now, if I'm completely honest, there's one sander out of all those sanders that I use the most, and that's a simple mouse sander. And the reason for this is because it uses a five inch piece of orbital sandpaper. But if we look at the design of the sanding block, you can see that there's portion of the sandpaper that don't get used, unless you're doing things like edges or corners. And I've thought to myself, it would be nice if we had a hand sanding block that used the entire surface of the sandpaper. And that's where this next sanding block comes into play. Let's go take a look at it. So this is the octopus sanding block. Let's open this block up and take a look at it. So inside the box, you get the sanding block itself, as well as a little plastic piece that I'll show you what that's for in just a moment. Now this is a six inch sander. To give you an idea, this is a five inch sanding pad and this is a six inch sanding pad. And I wanna be clear about this. This is a six inch sanding pad. So if you're using a five inch orbital sander, those pads will be too small for this device. So what's the functionality of this sander? Well, let's take a look at some of its features. Well, first and foremost, since this is dealing with a six inch pad versus a five inch pad, you're able to cover a larger area with the sanding block. The next thing that I wanna talk about is the handle. It's got a raised handle on it that really allows you to get a grip and more leverage as you're sanding your workpiece. But if you don't like this raised handle, you can easily remove it and have a closer to the surface feel with the sanding block. And if we look at the base of the sander, you can see there's little indentions here where you can place your fingers and really get a good grip on this block. 
Now I'm not quite sure why a woodworker would want to do this, but with its raised handle removed, you can stick a large dowel or a small broomstick into the hole of this so that you can get those further to reach places. But for us woodworkers, this is where this little insert comes into play. You can place it into that hole to seal it up. But that's enough about the basics of this tool. If we rotate the handle counterclockwise, you can see that both wings will slide into place and attach with these magnets. And if we take a closer look at the handle of this block, you can see there's little metal plates where these magnets attach. So by turning the handle of this full pad sanding block, we can convert this block into a sander that resembles our beloved mouse sanding block. And with the sanding block in this configuration, you can get into those 90 degree angles that can be very difficult to get into with a regular sanding block. Now, since these wings are very flexible, you could use this for concave or convex sanding. However, I would be hesitant on using it for those features. And the reason I would be hesitant to using this with concave or convex sanding is because neither one of the wings or the center is flexible in any way, shape, or form. And because the base and the wings are rigid, you're most likely going to get lines in your workpiece if you're using it for concave or convex purposes. But if you are using it for those purposes, make sure that you're rotating your sander back and forth so that you don't get those lines. And they really do market this tool as being a concave and convex sanding solution. So just be careful. Well, that's four items down and only one more item to take a look at. And this next item is actually five items. Let's start to talk about it. So if I were to ask you what your most used tool in the shop, what would it be? Leave a comment below and let me know what that tool would be. So I actually thought about this question for a bit. And after thinking about it, I came up with a tape measure. There is no tool that I reach for more than the standard tape measure. And my preferred tape measure is the Lefty Righty made by FastCap. This is a 16 foot tape measure and I use it in almost every single project. But did you know FastCap makes a bunch of other tape measures that might be useful for your shop? Let's go take a look at them. So in my shop, I've got five different types of FastCap tape measures. Each one of these serves its own purpose. Before we look at each one of these tape measures, let's talk about some of the features that each one of these has. So one nice thing about fast cap tape measures is they have a writable surface on the very front. This allows you to easily take notes as you're working on your project. If we turn the tape measure around, you can see there's a pencil sharpener in the very corner. There's also a clip right here where you can attach it to your vest or your belt. Another nice feature is it does have a locking mechanism on the very back where you can lock your tape measure temporarily in place. And all of these features are included in the five tape measures we're going to be taking a look at. So let's take a look at the difference between each one of these tape measures. First, let's look at the lefty righty, which is my preferred tape measure. So the nice thing about the lefty righty tape measure is you can read the measurements whether you're on the left side or the right side. There'll be numbers right side up on each side of the tape measure. The next tape measure that I have is the metric standard tape measure. On one side it has imperial and on the other side it has metric. So if you're trying to convert from metric to imperial or imperial to metric, this is the tape measure for you. And I've found this tape measure to be very helpful if I'm working on a project that doesn't have a standard measurement. A lot of times I'll be working on something and I'll cut something just a little bit short or a little bit long, and that's when I bring out this tape measure. The next tape measure is old standby, and there's nothing fancy about this tape measure. Everybody's fancy. This is simply an imperial tape measure with easy to read markings. So if you're getting a little bit older and your eyes aren't as good as they used to be, this is the tape measure for you. The next tape measure is the fast cap story pole. And as you'll see here, there's a blank side on one of the edges of the tape measure. And this is so that you can write different markings on this tape measure. So this tape measure really is a story pole. You can mark in the margin of this tape measure and get the exact measurement that you want. The fifth and final tape measure is the old standby flat back. This is the same tape measure as the old standby, only it's got one more feature. Let's go take a look at it. So yes, this is a standby tape measure, but it's also a flat back. And what does that mean? Well, it's got a flat back. And this allows you to bend it in any shape that you want so that you can get the measurements on any curve. So if you're trying to figure out the circumference of any surface, you can wrap this thing around any surface and figure out the exact measurement. Well, that's a lot of tape measures, and I hope you saw the difference in functionality between all five of those tape measures. If I had to recommend three, I would recommend the old standby flatback, the metric standard, as well as the lefty righty. Well, that's gonna wrap us up for today. Once again, I hope you enjoyed checking out these less commonly seen tools. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small growing woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.